All right, third grade, this is chapter 20 review test on page 419. I have a sheet of paper, I have my name, the date, what lesson I'm working on. Uh, we're gonna do number one through 10 together, but I'm also gonna show you where to look back in the chapter to find the answer because you do have an open book chapter 20 test coming up. So here we go, number one and two are vocabulary. The vocabulary choices I have are symmetry, similar, or congruent. These are my choices right here. So number one, figures that are the same size and shape are, so it says to go to page 408, so figures that are the same size and shape. Congruent figures have the same size and shape. There's my answer right there. So the vocabulary word I'm looking for is congruent. So I'm gonna come over here to my sheet of paper, right? And I'm gonna write figures that Oh, I guess it's kind of going, make sure I get it lengthwise for you. Figures that are the same size and shape are congruent. I want to make sure we have all that. Figures that are the same size and shape are congruent. Okay, and then we go to number two. A figure has blank if it can be folded along a line so that the two parts match exactly. So I'm down to similar or symmetry because I already took out congruent. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cross that out. Okay, so and it says to go to page 410. If I can fold along a line so that the two parts match equally. Here's one of those vocabulary words. A figure has symmetry if it can be folded along a line so that the two parts match exactly. Right there, that's the definition. We're good to go. So for number two, we are going to put, oops, let's start over. For number two here, let's slide it up. We are gonna put Oops, a uh, figure has symmetry if it can be folded along a line so that two parts match exactly. Period. So that was the end of our vocabulary for numbers one and two. Okay, then for three, four, and five, we have to tell what kind of motion was used to move each plane figure. What right slide, flip, or turn? So to kind of review that, I'm gonna go back to page 414 to review what a slide, flip, and a turn is. See, a slide doesn't change at all, right? Just slides along. Flip, it flips over a line. And turn, you're gonna turn it about one, kind of like a clock, right? You're gonna turn it at one point. Okay, so for number three, did I slide it? Did I flip it? Or did I turn it for number three? Slide, flip, or turn. What are we thinking here? Slide, flip, or turn. I'm thinking it flipped amongst that dotted line, right? So for number three, I'm gonna write flip. Okay, now number four. It doesn't look like number three, so I definitely know it's not a flip. So did I slide it or did I turn it? Remember, I can go back to page 414. Did I slide it or did I turn it? I'm thinking it looks more like a turn, kind of like on a clock, right? From that one center point. Right, right here, I turned it, holding that still. So for number four, I'm going to put turn. 
Okay, the number five. Did I do a flip like number three? No. Did I turn it like number four? No. So I'm thinking number five is probably a slide. Let's take a look back at page 414. Oh, yeah, it definitely matches that. So number five is a slide. Whoops, not side, sorry. Slide. Okay, then for six and seven, we're gonna talk about if the blue line is a line of symmetry. We're gonna write yes or no. So remember line symmetry, we're gonna go back to page 410. Line of symmetry is where it can be folded along a line so that the two parts match exactly. So here on this first shape, it has one line of symmetry, right? I can fold it horizontally and it's gonna match. Where this rectangle has two ways. I can fold it horizontally and vertically, right? Oh, this triangle has three lines, but this shape, I can't fold it anywhere and it's gonna match. So, ooh, number six looks like a heart, right? If I cut or I fold along this blue line, is it gonna match evenly? I'm thinking it will. So for number six, I'm gonna put yes. Now let's take a look at number seven. If I fold along that, it's gonna match. This top part looks smaller than the bottom part. So I think for number seven, it's gonna be a no for number seven. Okay, eight and nine, we're talking about whether the figures appear to be similar. Oh, not congruent, but similar. Let's go ahead and turn to page 412 to look at the definition of similar. Figures that have the same shape, they have the same shape, but may have different sizes are called similar. So look at these triangles are the same shape, but they're different sizes. These are both squares, but different sizes. These two are not the same shape at all. And those two, yes, they are triangles, but look how this one is tall, like it's tall and skinny. This one's more even. So similar, they have to have the same shape, but they can have different sizes. So number eight, let's take a look here. So I have three on the top, one down, two on the bottom. Now this shape has three on the bottom, so it grew by one, but one in the middle, but one, two, three, four, five on the top. Well, it doesn't look like the same shape, does it? It looks like kind of the top part, top and bottom stretched out, but the middle didn't stretch out. So number eight is, no, it is not similar. Number eight is not similar because part of it's stretched, but not all of it. Now looking at number nine, it's a circle, right? Here's a larger circle, and what did they just do to the small one? They just shrunk it down. So number nine is yes. Now number 10, that kind of gets a little tricky because you guys actually don't have these shapes at home with you. So make a model of this hexagon using pattern blocks. What is another combination of pattern blocks that can be used to make a hexagon that is congruent to this one? So if you go to page 416, you can see all these kind of different shapes that you would actually have. We have triangles that are green, um, the hexagons are yellow, the trapezoids are red, and the rhombuses are blue. So you guys don't have those in your hands right now, but I do. So we're going to kind of take a look at number 10, what could it be? So I'm gonna actually make that on my desk and then I'm gonna start another video and we're gonna show what we can put over top of it. Okay, third grade, so you can see I have the shape here that is in the book. I'm gonna use the shapes that I have that you guys actually would have at your desk if we were in the classroom. And I gotta put these shapes over top of it to create another one that looks identical to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to start off with a hexagon 
and I'm going to put it over the very front. Okay, so I have a hexagon. Then I'm thinking, hmm, I can actually take another blue one. I'm going to take a rhombus. And I'm going to put it right there. But then instead of using a trapezoid there, hmm, hmm, I'm going to take and I'm going to use two triangles to form that same shape but used it with different figures. Okay, then I come back to my sheet of paper. I'm going to fill out number 10. And we came up with a hexagon, a rhombus, and two triangles. Now, you can probably come up with more. There's more than one answer, but that's the one that we came up together. So, make sure you have numbers 1 through 10 done. If I went too fast at all, go ahead and pause the YouTube video and go back and try to finish it. Remember, this is a review for your open book test coming up.